It was not the first time people have tried to physically reconstruct creatures from the age of dinosaurs, but there are lessons to be learnt from those who have tried before. This is Crystal Palace Park in London. The statues are a solid reminder of the mistakes of the past. Back in the middle of the last century, there was hardly anything to go on. A few bones, a few teeth. And on the basis of that, they built these complete animals. So it's not really surprising they made a few mistakes. The head's the wrong shape. We know that nowadays. Um, in particular, right on the tip of the snout, there's this great big horn, which is very similar to that of a rhinoceros. Um, it's completely wrong. We now know that that horn is actually a thumb spike, which was used to defend the animal. Over time, ideas change, and in the case of these wonderful models, more dinosaur skeletons were found much more complete, and they allowed ideas about the shape and form of dinosaurs to evolve. By the 1920s, dinosaurs looked a bit more like this. At the time, such pictures were an amazing achievement, but the animals are still very inaccurate. The Brontosaurus should not have such a bendy neck, the T-Rex should not be standing up straight. In the intervening years, a lot more skeletons have been discovered, and as a result, museum pieces have become increasingly accurate. Making dinosaurs true to how they were meant basing them on up-to-date skeletons. It was then the job of sculptors to build the whole animal from the bones up. I think the basic shape of many of the dinosaurs that we now see today as reconstructions is pretty much correct. But I would say that science has progressed enough to get the basic shape as accurate as we would hope. Of course, far more than the basic shape was needed. The creatures would have to have skin, scales, colour, eyes and everything. Could a pile of bones reveal that? Well, bones give you a starting point. If you take the skull of Iguanodon here, um, in the case of this animal, the bones give you more clues about the way in which you might flesh out this framework. If you look at the back of the jaw, you have this very distinctive prong here. Uh, there are surface markings on that which show where the muscles attach, and this shows how the jaw works. So you can flesh in part of the skull there. At the front end of the jaw, you've got this area with no teeth, quite a rough surface with lots of little openings on the side for, for blood vessels. And this shows exactly where there was a horny beak growing for feeding in this animal. If you're really lucky, you can find the skin impression of a dinosaur. This is the skin of Iguanodon. Notice the fine scaly pattern, just like that of a lizard. It shows that the skin itself is quite flexible. There was one thing, though, that could only be guessed at. Colour is something we're very unlikely to find in the majority of dinosaurs. So far, we don't know of any colour pigments preserved in, in dinosaur skeletons. It's not unreasonable to Im su suspect that many dinosaurs were colourful in many ways and used colour in various aspects of their behaviour. So there's no harm in introducing colour to reconstructions. If you add this to the information from the other fleshy structures, then what you can begin to do is put together a picture of the dinosaur as it might have appeared in life. Thank you.